Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tool Talk Tuesday. And here I am going to set up the gimbal. I want to talk to you about the chain. Now, I learned some stuff on a cut above, which to me was pretty cool. I'm going to take my headphones out as per usual because I start talking and then I don't have them in. So, I really thought it was pretty awesome uh, learning from a lot of the carvers when we were doing a cut above. Uh, it was inspiring to see how fast carvers can carve, uh, the talent we had, the amazing things that, you know, you don't think about when you're carving, the things you learn when you're actually uh, just watching. And I was able to watch 12 of the best carvers in the world rip it up for, let's say 12 weeks. I can't remember how many weeks we actually filmed, but every episode's a new week. So let's say 12 weeks. Um, but what I did learn, which was from Chris Wood, which I thought was really cool, was that the rake, the, the grinding down the backs of the teeth. Now I've never ever, I wonder if I can zoom here. No, I can't. So I'm going to bring it in. I'd never done that before. I'd never thought it was even something like legit or something I would ever want to do. Now I've done it for a bit and I'm probably not as good as, you know, other carvers who have done this, but I'll tell you everything I know in how to grind these down and make them better. Because what I found is that it actually is better. You know, I, I, uh, I definitely was unsure at first because I just didn't think like, oh yeah, I would have known about this, blah, 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 you know, your ego, whatever. But Chris was absolutely right as he is many times in life. He's an awesome carver. If you don't know Chris Wood, go check him out and um, make sure you watch A Cut Above if you haven't seen it. So what I saw him do was grind the back quarter of this tooth. Now I wanna show you here what I mean and I'm saying like this right here let's see if I can switch it up here the camera will switch around if it will no come on baby do it switch trying to get it to do it on the gimbal it won't do it so we're just gonna have to wing it and I apologize for the delay here so what I'm talking about is this part right here so this little nick right here where my finger is just covered so that little nick right there i'm gonna grind that out and i'm gonna do the same on the other side also we're gonna go one side one side one side one side Nikita finger sander because i think that works best for me but if you don't have it you can do a flat file the reason i'm using a makita angle grinder is I like the consistency. It, it is inconsistent, so just remember that. Like, I, I'm crazy. I do my rakers down, not on the 12-inch and the 8-inch bars too often. If I'll just maybe do, like, a quick tap, and, and I'll drop my rakers a little bit, but sometimes I use a flat file for those. But this really works. So Chris explained to me that when you're bearing down or boring in and... Uh, you're pushing in on the tooth. If you cut away this little chunk here at the back, it actually kind of helps with the burning and, and it doesn't heat the tip up as much. And I've actually found that it cuts like way cleaner and way more aggressive. I really, really like it. I know they used to make chain like that. I think Oregon used to make it back in the day, but they've stopped. I think Oregon is basically like given up on 050 feel free to email them and shame them for it because carving is taking off and uh, they stop making sprockets. That's why everybody has a tough time finding the 2511 sprockets. It sucks and I don't mind throwing them on blast because I think it's bull shizzles. <laughs> but I really, really think this works. And the carvers, of course you can disagree with me. Of course you can, uh, you know, add things. I don't know what I'm doing on this one. I just had a 15 minute or not even a five minute conversation with Chris about it. And he explained it to me and, and I started doing it and I love it. I haven't pushed it to do it on my 24 inch tunies, but I'm very much thinking of trying it just to 
genuinely see if it works because really the thing is like why not try it if it's going to work it's going to help us it's going to make our carving life better why not just do it um so that's what my thought process is i'm going to put on my glasses make sure when you're doing this if you are using a finger sander basically say goodbye to the belt the belt will be done after it the metal will grind it right out and if you remember a little while ago i did get a metal shard in my eye this year because of it um so i wear these glasses now and i think they're great <laughs> um you know, I will show you what I'm doing here. So I think that I'll start on the one side first. I like to get it on an angle and I face this way. So I'm facing towards the tooth and I'm just going to heat it up and just tap it like this. Boom. Boom. Until I see that the tooth, I think I did it a little too much. Let's see if you can see it right. Where's my finger? Right there. Let's see. Will that catch it? You see how it kind of came down right here? And uh, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. I think that's a little too much. This one's better. Woo, come on, baby. Hard to use a gimbal and no zoom on your phone because you're just winging it. But that's kind of what I'm going to do. And I'm gonna do it consistently through this whole way and, and just kind of like tap, pull, tap, pull, tap, pull. So I've done it. And try not to get the chain links. You just kind of want to grind, grind. Try to get the same, the same thing every time. Same angle. Little less, little more. And then the same angle as like the way you're cutting. I at least that's what I would just assume is the best. If someone knows different, please let me know. But I'm going at like almost like a 25 degree. I do 25 degree to 20 degree on my smaller detail uh, saws because I almost want it ripping. That's just me. Um, and then also on like an angle, so it's kind of angling. So it's hitting the this side of the tooth, like the the outside part and the inside part. And obviously I'm doing this side where this side I'll switch it. I put come in here. Just keep doing it. Try not to get the teeth. It happens if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. Nothing's perfect. You can do it with a flat file, of course. And I'm already done though. That's the thing I like about this. And then here I'm gonna do the same thing. Hopefully. You'll be able to see it. No, I gotta have to do it like this, just so you can get a. I can get the right angle. I don't wanna. I don't wanna mess it up because you only do get one shot at it, and I, I want to make this video for you, but I also gotta get it right for myself. I don't wanna have to make another chain. And I'm over top of it. I can see angle. Angle. Doesn't take much. You know, if you're flat filing it, it will take a little longer. Woo, hot, don't do that. But just try to get it the same angle you had on the other side. And my belt's starting to get a little tired. So I just does have to be a little longer now. There we go. And it's going with it. I should have gone the other way, but this, this is bumping into my little uh, sharpening desk here. Yep. And I'm trying to do from the basically the same angle, same direction, and just buffing down the corner part. And it really makes a nice difference, you know? And I, I, I don't know. I just really enjoy it. Now, I'm not saying you got to do this your first time if you're just starting out. But if you're, you know... You've been carving for a while. It's not too hard for you to get chains because there is a good possibility you may not like it, and it may ruin your chain if you're inconsistent with your with your uh, the way you you sanded it. Like I can feel my hand is going out because there, that's better. That's better. It's a little inconsistent, but. I think when I'm doing it by myself, it's a little easier because I can just set it up the way I want it. And I would be facing a different way, not trying to play the camera. But 
if you get what I'm saying, you're going on that same angle, you're burning away the tooth, it will probably make your chain go a little bit faster, but I don't know. For me, I think it's it's it works great. You know, like, let's see, can I get a good shot of it? That's what it looks like now. So you can see kind of the teeth. Let's see, zoom in. There, you can see that it's nice. They're going the same direction. And now you can kind of bore into it. And I'll show you just by kind of uh, holding this saw here. And just kind of give you a little shot of what it's like now. Hopefully it'll has gas. Oh, maybe it needs to be turned on. I really like it. You can feel the difference in the chain. It has a uh, it has a good feel to it, you know? It's definitely, oh, where are we going, buddy? One of these days I'll fix this gimbal. It does have a really nice feel to it, you know? Here we go, now we can set it up and I can see it. So that's what it looks like when it's like this, and the other one's like that. And they have that little angle right there. You can see where my finger is. Just, just kind of getting it to the tip. now. Maybe I'm doing too much, and if I am, and you're a pro carver, and you know what you're talking about, please leave me a comment, send me a message. I'm happy to learn anything. And this is just a trick tip that I think works, and I think it works for me. Now, if it's hard for you to find chain, you're just getting started, probably don't need this. And if you know how to use your saw, even if it doesn't like mess up, like there's times where you, know, you hit a nail, and then all of a sudden when you're cutting, you can feel that bah, 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 bah. it's like a repetitious kind of which means something's off in the tooth you haven't sharpened it right this happens the same way when you use the makita and uh finger sander to do what i just did i definitely think you know if i was flat filing it and i had the patience to do it one two three four one two three four you know it would be way more consistent and you wouldn't get that chatter same with when you drop your rakers on on your uh, chain. I don't like to go crazy with dropping my rakers, especially on my 2511 detail saw. I personally like to keep it a little bit more consistent um, because you don't want that like dip, 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 jump. As soon as you drop those rakers, the teeth pull and then you can really, really like, you know, you can either move a lot of weight fast, but if you're doing a face, if you're doing some sort of carving, that requires detail, you don't really want that. So I like it when it's just lightly nipping it off, nipping, nipping, nipping my GoPros off. This is, he's, uh, he's like, hey, get back to filming. So yes, I hope this helped. I think this is a great new little trick that I've learned. Um, you gotta be consistent. If it's easy for you to get chains, go for it. If you're just getting started, you know, get to know the chain, get to know the bar, get to know your saw first before you start doing this. Maybe this is a little more advanced, but you start doing it now maybe it'll work out for you in the future so hopefully this helps guys thank you so much i hope these videos start to get better over the next few years next few years next few months i'm more stoked now i uh, appreciate all the comments last week from my last tool talk tuesday i definitely uh you know said i was burning out and uh got some really really nice messages from people eddie leslie and uh, a few other great carvers you guys sent me some nice stuff got me really stoked on uh Got me stoked on this again, you know? I know I've been uh, burnt. So hopefully uh, this helps. And uh, yeah, there we go. I like it. Let's carve. All right, Merry Christmas and uh, have a good day. Phew. Thanks for watching.